We're talking about the future of text adventures and parsers. Right. And you were saying that you thought that uh, uh, voice was going to change that. Yeah, so when, um, uh, when the first uh, Connect demo came out, yeah. um, I thought, crap, they've, they've gotten there ahead of me. Um, and it turns out that, that, that it was um, fake. It, it was Milo, uh, the Milo demo. Yeah, with the boy. With the boy. Yes. Um, and I remember uh, cornering uh, one of the the people and said, and finally, said, you know, who wouldn't really talk about what was underneath everything. And I said, okay, well, tell me this though: is it keyword recognition or is it parser driven? And he said, it was keyword recognition. And I said, yeah. okay, fine. So this isn't going to work. Um, <laughs> that was sort of my attitude. Right. Um, but I think that um, that parser a parser driven experience will come back. Well, the text adventure, I'm not so sure. I can see, I could see sitting in your car in traffic, yeah, talking to your game, yeah, that's on the radio, I'm with um, you. and and the game talks back. And so you say, open the door, and the game says, you you know, you open the door, and inside you see. A, a jeweled crown, yeah. um, and you say, take the jeweled crown, and, and the game says, uh, you can't take the jeweled crown because there's a force field surrounding it, or, you know, or whatever. Right. Uh, and so I could see very that the technology to do all of that, I think, actually exists. Um, and it's just a question of somebody with the will uh, and the time and the talent to pull all of those things together to make actually an entertaining product. I think voice recognition, which has traditionally stumbled over the sort of the 98% problem, um, I think you could you could you could get past that um, with a uh, a limited game vocabulary mm -hmm. uh, of uh, a so. Where it doesn't have to understand a hundred thousand words, yeah. But you know, if it only needed to understand five thousand words, that'd be a lot easier. And five thousand words is probably all you need. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, th there already exists text text in voice out. So the responses that I, as a writer, would write, could you know, you know, a program can read that, um, yeah. and right now it reads it in a pretty mechanical, non-interesting way, and that's not very friendly. Um, uh, the mix of of that uh, and um, where I would see an advance in technology that would help that. Is, uh, is is character inflected? So text to voice that that could have um, character uh, inflections and um, syntactical uh, uh, inflections embedded in the text. Yeah. So you know you put an exclamation point, you know behind wow, and the and the text knows that whether to say wow or yeah. wow. There was a really, there was one that really impressed me. It came out of Media Lab uh, a few years back, and I haven't seen follow-up work on it. I really should go find a link to it. But uh, these guys tried to make a, you know, simple parser-based question and answer system um, that featured a character in an environment who was aware of his environment. So you'd see him, you know, he's there, he's kind of leaning on this car, and he's standing by a coffee shop, and there's other things in the environment. And uh, you'd ask him things like, you know, is that your car? And he'd look at the car and be like, oh, well, it, it was very natural. He'd, like, look at what he was mm -hmm. talking about, you, you know, and uh, in, in the just the way, like, a real person mm -hmm. would. And that was, I felt like that was, like, this big step in terms of having AI that behaved more, mm -hmm. more human-like. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now, have you heard Chris Swain's prediction in this regard? 
No. So Chris Wayne makes this really interesting statement, this very bold statement. He argues that games are uh, are now where where uh, silent films were back in the days mm -hmm. of silent films, and making the analogy that people didn't take silent films very seriously. They were seen as kind of an aside, kind of a, uh, not 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 a real art form, more of an amusement, not mm -hmm. for everybody. But then as soon as they could talk, they just took over, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and his, his statement is that film was the literature of the, 20, of the 20th century. Sure. And his argument is okay. that the same thing's going to happen with games as soon as uh, games learn to listen to mm -hmm. us. We, we treat them as this sort of trivial thing, not for everybody, etc. Mm -hmm. But then once you have characters in games that can have a real conversation with you, mm -hmm. suddenly they will become the most powerful medium that we have. And his argument then is that games will be the literature of the 21st century. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people go for that. Um, I don't... The, the problem with games as, as literature... Yeah. Um, is is the interactive part yeah. of games and this and this is a place where there are really really strong camps and I'm like a holdout in one very small camp and then there's like everybody else in the big camp <laughs> um, and that is you know people say ah well you know these games now we have the power for players to make their own stories, to, to have the, these experiences that will be meaningful to them. And I sit off to one side and yell that uh, without authorial intent, mm. you cannot have a good story or, um, or, or a very good story. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, in, in the same way that art, you know, representational art, um, you, you know, if, if the art, the artist should have a, uh, an idea or an emotion or a thought that they're trying to uh, communicate. Yeah. Or ha to have a, a, an, an emotion that's in, that I'm having that I want you to have in yeah. some way. And so you have to figure out, all right, now how am I going to make that happen? Now there's some emotions that can be transmitted through, you know, chaos. So if you have a chaotic emotion and you do a chaotic pi picture, maybe you create that sense of chaos in, in another person. But in, ter but in terms of interesting ideas, in terms of interesting um, things that are, that are important, um, it calls for language. It calls for me talking to you somehow. Uh, and books can do that, and film can do that, and games can do that until the player starts mucking with them. Uh, and so the challenge of game design as a as a literary form is to let the game the players mucking about actually turn into create end up creating the experience inside of him that you wanted him to have. Mm. And that's pretty hard to do. Did you play Heavy Rain? No. I'd be really curious to see, if you get a chance to play it, I'd be really curious to hear your, your take on that. Because it, uh, it does some bold things uh -huh. in an attempt to uh, kind of create new kinds of experiences. Yeah. So that I think is the... So that's the that's the most interesting thing about games to to okay. me that you know I came to this as a writer and you know segued in, into games but I still take a pretty writerly approach to to games and and it's perfectly you know legitimate and fine and fun for people to make all kinds of of uh, games that are allow self expression and are pure entertainment with no message, and, and, and I'm fine with all that and make games like that myself. But in terms of what I'm interested in, uh, it would be solving that. Hmm.